Sunflower folks, welcome to Share Inspirations. In today's video, we are going to be discussing vases. Going from the worst type of vases to the best type of vases for the homegrown cutting garden. Um, we're also going to be taking a look at beginner friendly vases. Here I have my collection laid out of all of the vases that I own that I have collected over the period of five years that I've been growing cut flowers. I have them divided into four categories. Um, category one is basically almost all useless vases, either too big or too thin, and that's the category of those six vases back there, and I'm gonna show you close up of what I'm gonna talk about. Then I have category two, which are either too wide mouth and not narrow neck enough. Um, then I have category three, which are the, my favorite, the, the best kind of vases to own, and the category four, which are the beginner friendly vases. So let's get started. Let's start with the, the worst ones first. So here we have the six vases that I have in my collection that I find to be either completely useless or even if I do use them it's so rare that um, it's it's not worth owning them. Uh, the, the reason for this is I'm going to show you these of course needless to say these these ones here are too narrow neck, not much fits in here, um, unless you just wanna make a bouquet of one or two stems, stalks of gladiola um, or a long iris or something something like that. It, they're not good to purchase. Um, as beautiful as they are, I find that they're not really an investment in the long run. These ones here are too, too tall, so I have the tape measure here so I can show you. And they're about nine inches tall and about four inches, or actually almost five, four and a half inches wide. The reason that I don't like these is because you have to fill them to capacity in order for them to really um, look good. You And also you would have to have um, foam of like floral foam or you can use chicken wire. I'm personally not a big fan of either of those because I feel like you're just the extra work that um, you don't need to do with the floral wire and whatnot. Also the second reason is the fact that they're so tall they don't really come in handy with the homegrown flowers because you want at least the flowers to be one and a half times the length of the vase itself. When you're growing a lot of perennials and starting out, the plants are shorter. Um, a lot of my roses are only four to six inches tall. Some of my tulips are shorter. So it just, to me, seems like I would be investing way too much energy in trying to fill up a vase that I could just not use and get away with using something else. So those are the type, the, those two that you see, the glass ones, they are gifts. They came with, one of them came with a housewarming gift with sunflowers in it, and the other one came, my husband purchased it on Valentine's Day. And those are the, you know, tall flowers. They just kind of are all over the place unless arranged properly with, like I said earlier, chicken wire or floral foam. I'm personally not a big fan of either one of those two things. So also something to note is try not to get whenever you're purchasing vases try not to purchase uh, glass transparent glass only because when the water gets a little murky if you have specifically if you have dirty flowers in it when i say dirty flowers i mean flowers like xenia that murk the water in a day or so you don't want that water to be changed every two days i personally don't like doing that um, i live in the desert water is scarce here and i try to utilize the water for at least five to six days at the vases uh, the, the flowers are going to live in the vase. So I try and stick with vases that are tinted or either porcelain or ceramic that um, the, the the water is not going to show through. So if you don't have a choice, then certainly go for it, especially if you're getting a vase for free, no problem. But try and get tinted vases if possible. So that was category one. Category two are kind of the so-so vases that I think are, I don't u I don't utilize them as much but they're still, I reach for them every now and then. And 
Um, those four vases, right? Here, just an angle, right? These are the four vases that you see that are um, that I reach for sometimes, not all the time. The reason for that is these ones. So, for example, this vase right here is not as tall as the ones that I showed you earlier, the glass ones, but it still has a very wide mouth and it will still need to be filled to capacity. Um, it's not as hard to fill these because they're a little bit shorter. And let's see, the length here is about eight inches. And the width is about four inches. So they're not as tall, but they're still harder, harder to fill um, without floral foam or without chicken wire. You need something like that in there in order for it to, to work properly. I reach out for this one a lot more um, because I find that I start when I start filling flowers, I start with fillers. Then I go, I'm sorry, start with... Um, uh, yeah, it started with fillers like coleus or something, and then I go with my um, um, spiller flowers like or amaranth or whatnot, and then I do my uh, focal flower. So the, this, I find that the neck, um, I do believe that this is also about eight inches. Oh, actually, no, seven and a half inches tall. So it's a little bit shorter than that one, but the neck is four inches and it's decent but I reach for this one and that yellow one a little bit more than I do that transparent one. The same thing goes for this basket here. This was a um, gift from my husband and it had flowers in it with floral foam of course and I saved that and it does look nice but again I don't I'm not a big fan of floral foam so anything that requires that is not very heavily used. Now coming to my favorite favorite kinds of vases which are these ones right here and these are the ones that are mostly utilized in um, most of my cutting arrangements that I have made and shared in my Facebook page. I will leave a link below if you would like to check that out. So what happens here is they have, the reason why I like them as much as I do is because they have perfect size of um, um, hole, if you want to say. And it's printed so the murky water is not going to show and you can do a smaller arrangement like a bowl type of arrangement in that into something like this or you can do a taller one if you want but it's not a requirement to have to have a tall arrangement in something like this so something that I have um, reached for very frequently this is another one of the examples that this is a copper vase I acquired this from a thrift store more recently and my favorite part about this is the fact that it has a wide mouth, but it has a, a little bit of a narrow neck. What happens is if the neck is too narrow, the flowers are going to um, suffocate because you're, they got, they're too close to one another. Um, kind of like in those ones, those two that you see back there. That's what would happen if the neck was too, too thin if you try and put too many flowers in it. The length of this is about eight inches I want to say and um, the as far as the overall overall appearance um, actually it's eight and a half inches I was wrong all right and then the mouth is still four inches but the the neck is narrow which leads me to not have floral foam in something like this and if you do have murky water it doesn't matter because you don't see it and this is something that would last you a while so anytime you see copper vases keep on the lookout and I believe I paid six dollars at the thrift store for this I still thought that was still too much but it was a good buy either way um, this is another one right here it's a blue one same thing wide mouth and it has a narrow neck perfect for medium size arrangements and I reach for these very often because instead of having one big bouquet, I would like to have four around the house. And this one also, you can do um, a little bit of a shorter arrangement. So the arrangement can be about, let's say like this high or a taller one and either way, it would be fine. 
same thing with all of these that they're printed and they're my favorite because they have the best um, it, this one doesn't have a narrow neck but it's because of the shape of this it's very easy to fill and the flowers don't flop all over the place um, this one is very similar to that blue one that I showed you same thing narrow neck and wide mouth those are the best type of vases to own for the home gardener um, this one is transparent and I did an experiment with this right here I put contact paper you know the wallpaper that you find at the dollar store and I wrapped it around to see how long it would last and it has lasted me all the washings for the last month or so that I've done in it so so far it's a it's a good experiment we'll see how long it goes same thing with something like this uh, the mouth is wide but it's shorter so you can do a little bit shorter arrangements bowl type arrangements I make three arrangements on a regular basis in my house I do one on the coffee table one in the living room and one for the bedside the coffee table one is only the only one that seems to be somewhat taller but the other two because of the dining table I don't want a tall arrangement as an obstruction while we're eating so most of other arrangements are a little bit shorter and shorter to medium size arrangements and here we have my best kind of vases now we're going to move on to the last part which is going to be the um basic uh, the beginner gardener vases and this right here is the best way i can explain how i found um my favorite kinds of vases when i was starting to garden so what happens is when we first start out, we get so excited, we want to cut stuff, but all the big vases, you feel like you're never going to be able to fill because the, the stem length is only four to six inches. So with this right here, this is only about five and a half inches total. Okay. And the mouth is about two and a half inches. And this is perfect for shorter tulips shorter daffodils shorter um, late winter garden perhaps if you're cutting something and you don't have um, a long stemmed plant this one is even smaller so right here five inches five inches long total and right here two and a half inches same thing smaller vase for winter arrangements or for a beginner gardener. This one is super cute, I wanted to share. This is a uh, elephant with a little uh, <laughs> nose. It's actually a watering can that I purchased and I find that it's a very cute uh, vase for late winter, early spring flowers, if, especially for a beginner gardener when you're just starting out. So guys, this was my arrangement of all not arrangement but all of my vases and I hope you enjoyed the video and the ducks are saying hi to me and I will see you in the next one bye